Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the topic research methodology. To begin with, the term research means search for knowledge. The particular word research is formed of or it is formed of two words which is re and search which means search again. It can also be considered as an organized inquiry in search of facts. It also involves searching again. That's why it is called as research and finding out new facts. So in this particular process, what happens is that already established the so-called fact will be replaced by the new fact or it will modify the older one. Research can also be defined as a systematic, intensive and structural process of carrying out scientific investigation. And this scientific investigation results in a formal record of a procedure and report of results and its conclusion. So this is a systematic uh, way of studying a particular subject where you have different sets of structural processes or different steps to be followed while doing something which is called as a research. So why research has or why research should be systematic or why it should be formal or why is it necessary to record its results, conclusions, etc. So, uh, so the need for such a formal process or a formal systematic process is that a research which is carried out or a particular study which is carried out by a particular person today should be reproducible tomorrow. That's why it's, it is said to be systematic, to be formal, it should be recorded. So how that particular uh, person uh, did the investigation or how the particular experiment was conducted what were the conditions which was given and if such conditions were given tomorrow will that be replicated or it should be replicated so all this processes like replicating the particular result again it should be replicated only if a particular uh, work or a particular experiment is replicative that can be considered as an uh, as a particular work of or a particular experiment so coming to the uh, different types of research we have mainly three types of research fundamental research applied research and policy research so coming to the first one, fundamental research, uh, pure or theoretical research. So such type of research, which is a fundamental research, usually give rise to a new theory or throw additional light onto existing theory. For example, uh, the research or uh, the particular branch of or the type of research which is called as theoretical research involve proving an already existing theory for example uh, any theory for example you have in biology you have the cell theory or in uh, genetics we have many theories like uh, the uh, law of independent assortment or the law of segregation etc 
so such type of research works which will result in either it a particular field of research it can result in uh, bringing up a new theory or it can throw additional light into an existing theory uh, such things will not have practical application to human life okay, it cannot be applied uh, practically in a normal uh, or in the routine life of a person such research is usually referred to as a theoretical research coming to applied research the term itself is just uh, you can uh, consider it as an opposite to fundamental research where the result of that particular research will have an application So, uh, what you are seeing, the mobile, what you are using now, or the laptop which you are using now. So, such things or such a device is a result of a research. Research in the sense, primarily you had a computer which was as big as a room. And you needed two or three persons for switching out a person will be sitting in front of the screen it was a screen like that of a cinema theater and that person will be giving information and there, there will be two or three persons behind the screen who will be uh, switching on the switches so that something will be displayed on the screen from that computer to a laptop or to an Android or an iPhone which you are having now is a result of what is called as an applied research because whatever research is done in that particular field will be directly applied to human life or to humankind so this is an example the field of electronics is an example of applied research another main example is in the medical industry or in an agriculture industry the main example is our uh, covid vaccines so when a need emerged the pandemic when the pandemic uh, arose what happened is Many countries, many researchers devoted their time, they devoted their uh, money, etc. to produce something which is called as a vaccine. So, production of a vaccine which is definitely into uh, the medical uh, kind of research is, can be also considered uh, to be part of what is called as an applied research where you have an application to the uh, end result of the research or the end result of that particular work so coming to fundamental research which we discussed earlier in a fundamental research uh, what happens is that uh, there is no direct application of the result of that particular work that will end up with a theory or it will end up with throwing light into an existing theory or a modifying the existing theory or adding up to it etc so whenever you have a direct application of a particular work or direct application to human life that will come under what is called as an applied research the same as with agricultural field or agricultural research where uh, the particular research work for example a particular scientist is working to improve uh, the yield of a particular crop so the end result is the yield will increase so that increase in the yield is a result of that particular work and that will be applied because that can be uh, or that will result in uh, yielding or increase in yield of that particular crop which is also useful to humankind that can be applied directly so such research come uh, come into what is called as an applied research coming into the next one which is called as a policy research uh, usually results in policy implementation then uh, adding to theoretical knowledges etc 
So such research or such type of research that is policy research uh, comes under both uh, science as well as for arts. You can have policy research. So the end of a policy research is implementation of a policy. An example is the budget. So what we hear is a budget which is announced by either the finance minister of the state or the finance minister of the central. So before they come up with a budget, they will have many surveys, they will have many calculations about the previous year's budget, previous year's expenditure, previous year's uh, income, etc. So uh, depending upon that, a budget will be uh, produced. So a budget is nothing but they will have many uh, a policy in a budget. So the same uh, if you take an example of uh, our uh, vaccines policy, the vaccination policy. Okay, That is also dependent on many uh, survey or a policy is being created. For example, in the first set of uh, our uh, vaccinations, okay, there was a policy where uh, the age group above 60 was being vaccinated, coming to the second one um, above 45, etc. So, uh, so these decisions or these decisions are based on something which are called as surveys. Okay, so uh, when uh, the government decides to provide vaccination for the age of 60 above, uh, the fact is that because they are the most vulnerable people, because uh, their uh, immunity level is low, etc. So, uh, depending upon that consideration, a policy is being implemented. So, the same as with uh, or, uh, policy research mainly comes... Uh, uh, whenever uh, decisions are to be made for a state or a central extra for uh, generating a policy. For example, we had five-year plans uh, in the earlier governments, they had a five-year plan. For the next five years, what will be done, etc. So, all those are uh, based on something uh, which is called as a policy, the end of a policy research. So, these are the main uh, Types of research, fundamental research, applied research and policy research. Hope uh, you get the difference of uh, the three, fundamental, applied and policy research. Next coming to what is called as a research project. So a research project is a pre-planned, a pre-planned work which have many structures, which is definitely a scientific program and a program which involves a series of investigations uh, and it also involves continuous evaluation. So usually a project means, uh, if, you, uh, if you consider the student's project, okay, a student's project is a project which a student do uh, for her completion, for his or her completion of a graduate degree for example you people will have a student project at the uh, or during your fifth and sixth semester which is mandatory for you to get the award of the degree so uh, if i take the example of a student's project we will see uh, whether all these things like whether it is pre-planned whether it is a scientific program etc uh, can be incorporated in a uh, student's project so if you take the example of a student project, okay, it should be pre-planned. Pre-planned in the sense that the student and the teacher who is the guide should have a planning in the sense if you are going to do a project. Okay, for example, many of you might have uh, uh, done the project of uh, a cube, uh, etc. So in such uh, projects, 
or in such students projects you pre plan something or your guide will plan or the teacher will plan that particular work planning in the sense the teacher will be guiding the student uh, in the sense you should do this particular work from day 1 to day 3 and you should uh, observe these things or you should be observing this particular uh, or you you should be or you will be doing this particular experiment for this month and you can do the next experiment in the next month etc so uh, that is what is called as pre planning planning prior to doing the project because after starting the work you cannot go back and say uh, experiment 2 uh, which you have uh, which are uh, which you are doing now uh, if you have five experiments and you are numbering it 1 2 3 4 5 5 actually the order of that experiment should be in month 1 uh the first experiment in month 2 the second experiment month 3 the third etc because you have been pre planned and you have been discussed uh what happens is that you start doing the second experiment in the first month so that is lack of what is called as a first one which is pre planning so whatever small the project be there should be planned that should be discussed with your mentor with your guide your teacher Uh, so that uh, any flaws can be corrected prior to doing so uh, prior to doing uh, the necessity of pre planning is that uh, you can avoid any flaws you do not have to waste time doing unnecessary experiments time money etc can be saved money in the sense if you are doing something which is related to an experiment you buy some chemicals etc if you do a wrong experiment in a wrong time so that results in uh, the spoiling your time as well as spoiling the money next is it should be a scientific program in the sense when you are doing a project it should be done scientifically scientifically in the sense for uh, an uh, example if you are doing a project okay for example if you are doing a project uh, which you are uh, most of our students do uh, the project which uh, uh, the the testing of uh, the effect of detergents on fishes given okay, detergents because whatever we uh, wash our clothes etc about detergents whatever we use you uh, put that particular water especially in the urban in the cities all those comes to the water body in the general water body where you have the fishes etc so that particular uh, project where you test the effect of detergents on uh, fishes uh, a scientific method is or uh, we'll discuss about a scientific method as well as an unscientific method so this is the particular project so what i am uh, going to do is that first we'll uh, discuss about an unscientific method of doing this particular project so this project what uh, students actually do is they take a particular fish in uh, a particular uh, aquarium so that they can uh, see the movements of the fish whether uh, the fish is uh, showing some trouble when the detergent is added etc so uh, the first I, i i will discuss the unscientific way of doing that particular project and the second second step we'll discuss about the scientific way of doing the same project so uh, in an unscientific way so uh, the particular guide uh, told the student to do this project effect of detergents on uh, the uh, uh, on fishes so what the students does is he, uh, uh, because it was not uh, done scientifically what he did is Uh, he took an uh, a particular uh, aquarium from the lab he filled it with water uh, and uh, he put uh, some uh, three fishes or uh, five fishes into that and what he did is he took uh, uh, some uh, detergent and uh, he just uh, he, he put that particular uh, detergent or some amount of detergent into the water and he started observing so here the unscientific thing or what is unscientific is that the student in the first step he did not 
record the volume of water he filled into the aquarium that's the first thing because he should know what amount of water he should add whether it is 10 liters whether it is 5 liters etc the second thing is that he did not either ask his guide or he did not refer to any literature how many fishes should be observed in a single experiment he took some fishes he added in that so that is the second one scientific thing the third unscientific thing was that he did not measure the amount of detergent which was added so the amount of detergent and the amount of water which is added into that particular aquarium is important because the amount of detergent for say if you are taking 10 gram of detergent and if you are dissolving it in 5 liter only if you know this 5 liter and 10 gram you can know the concentration of detergent in that water or in what concentration of that particular detergent is affecting that particular fish or at what concentration does the fish uh, show breathing difficulties or the fish dies okay so uh, this is what is the uh, difference between an unscientific way of doing an experiment and scientific way of doing an experiment so when you're doing a research project it should be scientific that means everything uh, should have should be quantified you should have a number for everything you cannot say that i put or i added some amount of detergent you should be clear enough to say that I added one milligram of detergent and I increased that to 5 mg. Adding 1 mg each, I increased that to 5 mg and found that at, at 4 mg itself, the fish was showing or 3 mg itself. When I added 3 mg of detergent in 5 liter, the fish was showing breathing difficulty and when it was increased to uh, 5 milligram per 5 liter the fish died so there you have a number to represent the concentration of detergent you added so this is an example of so in every project uh, whenever you are doing a project please keep in mind that whatever experiment you do it should be quantified whatever experiment whether you are doing it in the lab or you are doing it as a survey okay you will have two types of uh, uh, students projects uh, when you come to a graduate program uh, some will be interested in doing a survey type of research in a survey type of research also uh, so when uh, you talk about a survey uh, what you do in a survey is you will have a questionnaire, you will distribute the questionnaire to your uh, sample population. Uh, for example, if you are going to uh, see the uh, nutritional level of your uh, classmates, you will have a set of questionnaire and you distribute the questionnaire to different uh, of your classmates, so 50 or 60 individuals. So there you have a number, your total sample size is 60. And in that 60, from each question you can quantify it so for the first question how many of uh, the students is having a regular breakfast for say uh, 40 out of 60 so that gives you a number so for every project whether uh, it is an experiment inside the lab whether it is an uh, survey type of project everything should uh, have something which is uh, quantifiable in terms of number only with that number or uh, whenever uh, you are having something in numbers as a result you can communicate with to others easily so communication in the sense that in a survey project if I am telling that uh, some of the students are uh, taking breakfast in the morning so what does that sum denote so if you put it in another way if i'm putting it as a number out of 60 students sample 40 students are having regular breakfast in the morning so it becomes clear that sum is replaced by a number which is 
which gives a clear uh, result or a clear idea of what you are doing to the one who is hearing you okay there is if you are doing a particular scientific project there are or that uh, should be communicated to others so when you communicate it to others that communication or that second level of uh, uh, project which is communication is the uh, end of your project where you have an oral presentation which is valued by usually it was valued by external uh, an external investigator who will ask you questions when you present it etc so when a particular a new person other than your guide uh, hears this particular project or when you communicate with that particular person if that is denoted in numbers or uh, uh, something which is quantifiable that gives more level of communication to your project or your results your research becomes more communicable to others what you have done becomes more to be communicated to others so that is what is called as a scientific program so it involves as i said it involves a series of investigation series in the sense for every research project it should be as i said it should be replicated okay the main example of this replicativeness is uh, what you do in your chemistry lab when you do a titration if you get uh, or you record that particular uh, endpoint only if you get that endpoint three times the same endpoint three times the same as with every research project you cannot close a particular work by doing it once you should repeat it so uh, that is what is called as a series of investigation because it should be repeated uh, or uh, at least three times depending upon the uh, uh, samples involved depending if you are doing a project on fishes you cannot uh, hamper uh, 20 fishes for an experiment so that is enough if you do with three three fishes the same uh, if you are doing a particular detergent you have to do the same with three fishes to confirm whether it is correct because in the first uh, experiment as we said the fish showed difficulty at 3 mg and it died in 5 mg in the second in when you do it in the second time if you get it in the same pattern you can confirm that what you did in the first thing was true you can do it for one more time and if you do it thrice what happens is that particular result is confirmed to be true is that clear so that is and that is also what is called as a continuous evaluation continuous evaluation in the sense that is also applicable to a student's project that is if you are uh, usually for your graduation program the uh, uh, the uh, stipulated time to complete us depending upon the project it can be three months it can be six months etc so whatever the stipulated time mean time be you should have continuous evaluation continuous evaluation in the sense if you do a particular experiment you show the result to your guide okay you did it three times you replicated it and there was some problem so your guide will suggest some changes to be incorporated in the study so that is the need for continuous evaluation so that the errors etc can be uh, discussed and it can be monitored or what are the causes of errors etc can be uh, evaluated so that is what is called as continuous evaluation till the end of the project and monitoring until completion monitoring means if uh, in a student's project monitoring is done by the teacher or the guide and it should be completed in a stipulated time so uh, the same example of a, a student's project can be extrapolated to uh, a, uh, a very big scientific program for example uh, the main example what we have in our uh, in this day-to-day -day life the vaccine the same uh, that is also the end result of a research project the covid vaccines not only the one vaccine the vaccines which we are having now have undergone all these processes it was structured it was pre-planned 
it was a scientific program it involved a methodology it was continuously evaluated it was monitored and it had a stipulated time okay so uh, an example of such as a human genome project uh, a human genome uh, the human genome project is nothing but it was uh, the uh, the so called the largest project humankind has ever done largest in the sense that for this particular project the human genome project scientists from every country in the world united or they were working together to accomplish this particular task at different centers they were working to accomplish this particular task which is called as a human genome project it took about 10 to 15 years for completion so different scientists in different parts of the world were working with the same project and the result of all those scientists were put together to complete what is called as a human genome or the sequences of the human genome was deciphered uh, by this particular project uh, which was called as a human genome project and coming to the types of research projects you have individual project individual project is an example uh, where a particular scientist he is having a project and he himself is doing uh, that particular project and that comes under what is called as an individual project a uh, group project means uh, several uh, scientists together okay doing uh, the same uh, doing a particular uh, project that is called as a group project that is you have a single project which is being done by different uh, uh, scientist in a particular institute that is called as a group project uh, for example uh, there is a project in our college and that project is done by teachers from uh, zoology department the chemistry physics etc such a project will be called as a group project and if a particular project is being collaborated by uh, teachers from different colleges or from different research centers of the world like a human genome project that is called as a collaborative project and student project is a short term project uh, which is usually uh, done to fulfill the criterion of a particular graduation either under graduation or post graduation etc so these are the type of research projects so uh, this was just an introduction to what is called as a uh, the topic which is called as research methodology uh, where we discussed about uh, the term research we discussed the different types of research the two th types of research we also discussed uh, what can be considered as a research project and the types of research project so in the uh, next class we will be discussing about the method of research or research methodology or steps which are involved in doing a research project thanks for hearing